On day one, I spawned into the Aspen Forest as a speaker man. Ten hearts? Uh-oh, I better play this safe, or I'm gonna be in real trouble. But I didn't have time to form a strategy. Suddenly, the trees started setting fire around me. Some even exploded. What's happening here? Out of the fire stomped my worst nightmare, the many-legged, fully operational G-Man Spider Toilet, the leader of the Skibbity Toilet Army. Oh no, you're the last thing I wanted to see. I'm the last thing you'll ever see, Speaker Man. The Skibbity Army will conquer this world just like it conquered all the others. Not if my speakers have anything to say about it. Speak to this. He blasted me with his laser eyes, knocking me off my rhythm. He was far too strong to fight. All I could do was turn around and run. I ran through the woods, hoping to avoid the laser blasts. When the G-Man was gone from view, I took a moment to relax, but I wasn't out of the woods yet. Literally and figuratively, a swarm of normal skibbity toilet came out of the trees, all fixed with malicious intent on me. I was outnumbered and out of luck until Sonic Boom! A blast of sound fired out of me, pushing back the advancing toilet squadron. That gave me just enough time to turn and get the heck out of Dodge. The Skibbities are here already. I need to warn the Alliance before they take this world too. On day two, I went into survival mode deep in the Aspen Forest. My commander must have sent me here to investigate the Skibbity threat on other worlds, but I won't be able to do anything without the proper tools. I found some peach trees and broke them down for wood, piling logs and logs of it into my inventory, along with some sticks. I gathered some peaches, which I ate to refill my hunger bar. Can't be a good soldier if I don't have healthy rations. I built myself a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. From there, I dug up my first stone blocks and made myself a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. And as if on cue, a gaggle of standard skibbity toilets came rolling out of the tree line. Skibbity, 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 skibbity. I'm so sick of hearing that already. With my new stone sword and my sonic booms, I fought them until the entire squad was defeated. Whew, that wasn't easy, but at least I've cleared the area now. Maybe I should make a base here. With the spare wood I'd collected earlier, I started building myself a basic one-room base. It isn't much, but every war effort needs to start somewhere. On day three, I headed out into the canyons. There, I could find plenty of stone to harvest. A wooden base is fine for a start, but given some of my enemies have laser eyes, I need something a little stronger. I was halfway through mining stone blocks out of the canyon walls when I saw some strange bony creatures flying above. Soul vultures! One flew straight down towards me and started circling me. Yeah, fresh meat. Haven't seen one like you before. Ah, stop biting. I'm from another world, and I'm here to save you all from a terrible threat. Shush now, speaker boy. Food doesn't talk. The soul vultures descended on me, and there were too many of them to fight off, even with my sonic booms. All I could do was turn and run before they picked me to the bone. I guess not all of the creatures here are unified against our common enemy, but that didn't mean everything here was against me. On my way back through the canyon, I ran into to a mandrill sitting alone. She looked upset. Is everything okay, Miss Mandrill? My name's Mandy, and now everything is terrible. Those diabolical toilets. They destroyed my home and took everything from me. Those blasted skibbity toilets. Come with me, Mandy. I'll let you stay at my base. I'm Zozo, and together, we'll get revenge on the porcelain monsters who did this to you. Oh, thank you, Zozo. You're a hero. She left with me as we made our way back across the treacherous canyons. From day four to day five, I returned back to my base in the Aspen Forest with Mandy the Mandrill. I decided I should start from scratch, so I tore down my starter base and used the materials I'd collected to remake my base. I ended up going for a toilet base. The plan is to pretend to be one of the skibbity toilets. I bet they won't suspect a thing. Inside the toilet, I even built a new room for Mandy, giving her a bed and some furniture in there. Figuring we could use some extra luxuries, I also built a kitchen and a lounge so we could start to feel a little more at home in this strange new place. She seemed delighted with it. Wow, Zozo, this is amazing. I'm going to rest here and get my energy back. Thank you for all you've done. Rest well, Mandy. When you're fully recuperated, we'll talk strategy. Mandy retired to her room while I conducted a perimeter search around the area. I needed to make sure that no one found the new base suspicious. That was a good instinct because a squad of skibbity toilets were right in front of me. I'm putting my war face on. 
Or I would, if I had a face. I drew my sword and fought them to the last bowl. It wasn't easy, but in the end, my battle experience served me well, and they were destroyed. And even better, once they were gone, they left behind a new tool, an anti-skibbity chemical blaster. This falling into my hands is probably the last thing that they wanted. I'm gonna make them regret it. From day six to day eight, I left for a pasture outside the forest, knowing that we'd need some more natural resources for the base. It was just my luck to happen upon some pigs. Our army is gonna need rations. Pork and bacon will do nicely. I herded some pigs back to the base and built a sty for them in just the right spot. I don't have that many pigs, all things considered. That's why I returned to the pasture, ready to shepherd some more. Then, boom! A rocket hit the ground next to me, causing a massive explosion. It left me badly injured. And even worse, when the explosion cleared, I saw the G-Man spider toilet skittering towards me. Your end is nigh, speaker boy. None shall stop the Skibbity Army. Before I even had time to equip my blaster, he unleashed his full arsenal, firing rockets and his laser eyes. There was no way I could fight him, especially injured. All I could do was run away, dodging as best as I could. G-Man was not a force to be messed with. Thankfully, in the end, I still got out of there, injured, humiliated, but alive. From day nine to day 10, I was back at the base, still recovering from G-Man's devastating surprise attack. He was still a lot stronger than I'd possibly accounted for, but at least I wasn't alone. Mandy the Mandrill approached me while I was in bed with some encouraging words. You helped me, Zozo, and now I'm gonna help you. The war effort against the Skibbity Toilet Army won't work unless we all pull together. Go look outside. I've made you something that I think will help inspire you. I went outside and saw that Mandy had been constructing the start of a huge, amazing statue. I couldn't tell what it was yet, but I was so excited to see it when it was finished. Can you guess what it's gonna be? If you can, tell me down in the comments, cause I have no idea. But the statue wasn't the only thing Mandy had been working on. It turned out she was a pretty talented architect. That's why she was able to build a storage room, perfect for the weapons and armors we'd need for an army. She'd also built a training room where we could train ourselves and the anti-skibbity soldiers and a furnace for smelting metals. Well, I better get my hands on some then. From day 11 to day 12, I was working in the training room, trying to hone my warrior skills. Mandy the Mandrill came in to join me soon after. Thank you for taking me in, Zozo. I want to do everything I can to help you in the war effort. That's good to hear, Mandy. We can't let G-Man and his minions take over the world. It'd be catastrophic. Who or what exactly is this G-Man and all his skibbity toilet minions anyhow? They're world-conquering monsters, self-replicating, self-motivating. They'll take over everything and leave nothing behind. They tried to do it in my world, and I think my commanders back at the Alliance must have sent me here to stop it from happening here. That sounds horrible, Zozo. But how can we possibly stop them? There are so many of them, and they're so powerful. All we can do is fight, man. Andy. Fight with everything we've got. That way, even if we lose, we'll lose honorably. Sounds like a plan to me, Zozo. We'll never let those evil toilets win. From day 13 to day 15, I went back to the canyons to settle an old score. How can I be expected to be a good soldier and take on the Skibbity Army if I can't even beat some soul vultures? The second I saw one of them circling above me, I couldn't help but feel nervous. Then it spotted me and swooped down to engage. Back again, speaker boy? Good. I was feeling rather peckish. You don't know what you're doing, Vulture. This is a war. It's skibbity toilets versus everything else. You don't think they'll come for you too? War is our bread and butter, Speaker. Skibbity toilets, speakers, animals, all the same meat to us. We just enjoy the remains on the battlefield. And I guess I better take you down. But the soul vulture wasn't alone. The whole flock came swooping in and I needed to use my sonic booms to take them all down one by one. When they were defeated, I had enough XP to level up, becoming bigger, stronger, and getting a boost to 24 hearts. But most importantly of all, I developed a new offensive capability, Energy Blast. Oh yeah, that's more like it. From day 16 to day 19, I realized that I needed to create weapons for the war effort against the toilets. That's why I ventured into an abandoned mining cavern beneath the first, ready to take on whatever I needed to in order to win the war. And I came up against resistance straight away, a deadly blaze creeper. It started shooting fireballs at me. I tried to take it down from a distance, but it wasn't working. I got closer and he just exploded. That was dangerous. Hope I don't encounter any more of these. 
I should check if he dropped any useful loot. I approached the creeper hole, but instead of finding loot, the explosion uncovered a rich vein of iron ore. Exactly what I was here for. I collected up as much iron as I could then returned to my base. I used the furnace to smelt it and used some spare sticks to make a couple of iron swords. I kept one sword for myself and put the other in my training room. With these, I can start to arm an anti-skibbity army of my own. With the spare iron, I made myself an iron pickaxe. This would be perfect if I ever got hands on some diamonds. From day 20 to day 22, I was woken up with a start by Mandy the Mandrill. She was hopping around in a blind panic. Zozo, Zozo, you need to wake up. Uh, what's happening, Mandy? You're confusing me. G-Man, he's right outside. Said something about wanting to stamp out the resistance personally. Oh no, then I'd better get out there and stop him. I grabbed my weapons and ran out to face G-Man. He wasted no time in firing one of his rockets, which barely missed me. You've gotten stronger, speaker boy, but not strong enough. You think you can stop? The ravages of war? We will consume all. The skibbity rampage will never end. You're not a wall. You're barely even a speed bump. All this talk, G-Man. I think it's because you're afraid. But I'm not about talk. I'm about action. Let's fight, you clogged up toilet. The battle began. He blasted me with his laser eyes, but I was much stronger than I used to be. I volleyed sonic booms and energy blasted him. And when those had thrown him off balance, I pulled out my skibbity blaster and let him have it. Clearly, it was all a little too much for him. He broke away from the battle and used his rockets to destroy the blocks between us. You got lucky, speaker boy. Next time, my minions will deactivate you for good. He skittered off into the desert. I think I saw a crack in its ceramic armor. Maybe I can win this war after all. From day 23 to day 26, I worked tirelessly in order to build an upgraded weapon that might turn the tide of the war against the insidious skibbity toilets. I had to enhance my own individual abilities so that the next time I met G-Man, I could deal some real damage to him. Since fighting with music was my specialty as a speaker man, I chose to make a guitar weapon that would amplify the sonic frequencies of my speaker head. What an awesome idea for a weapon! I went into the training room to start trying it out on some blocks and found it was insanely effective. Now I'm loud and proud. Proud to be a devoted soldier fighting back against the forces of Skibbity, that is. And if you want to support the cause and help me in my other crazy adventures, remember to search ZOZO in order to find more of my videos. But for now, I'm going to get back to preparing for the battle so that we can win this war. From day 27 to day 31, I was baking some peach pies when Mandy came over to tell me she completed more of the statue and wanted to show me her progress. This way, Zozo. It's really cool. Okay, wait for me. I followed Mandy out to the area where the statue was being built and gazed in wonder at what it had already become. This would certainly inspire the troops to fight, but I couldn't help but feel as though something was missing. Hey, Mandy, don't you think that part could use a bit of red concrete? You know, to really make it stand out? You're right. I totally see that, but it's pretty rare around these parts. You'll have to travel to the Grag Gardens for it. I've never been there before, but if it's for the statue, I'll do it. Be careful out there, Zozo. The skibbity enemies are everywhere. You know me. I'm always careful, especially in enemy territory. Within a couple days' journey, I found myself in the Crag Gardens. Just as I had feared, the skibbity toilets had already spread to this biome, too. Skibbity, 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 skibbity. A bunch of them came at me all at once, so I pulled out my guitar and started swinging away. The sonic waves were more than they could have and were able to quickly defeat them all. When there were no more skibbity toilets in the area, I found out what they were guarding. It's a treasure chest with a whole bunch of red concrete and some extra red nether bricks. My quest was not in vain. I gathered the material and began to make my way out of the crack gardens. From day 32 to day 35, I was attacked by another pair of skibbity toilets while on my way out of the crack gardens. This is bad. There are more of them here than I thought. I struck them down with my guitar and scanned the area for more of the enemy. Thankfully, there weren't any more skibbity toilets, but there was a swamp pig. There was me. You should get to safety. This whole biome is crawling with those creepy skibbity monsters. I want to, but not without my best friend, Otto the Ocelot. He was taken by a skibbity spider, and now he's trapped. Those skibbity fiends. I've been fighting against them for as long as I remember. Maybe you can help me get Otto back. I'll be all over it, like flies on trash. 
From day 36 to day 39, I followed the swamp pig's directions to the lair of the skibbity spider that took his friend. It sounded dangerous, so I went along to spare the swamp pig from the troubles of the battlefield. When I got to the enemy base, I went into stealth mode and searched around for an entrance. I could hear the telltale annoying song of the skibbity toilets from inside the base, and that told me that I was getting close to where the skibbity spider was. Skibbity bop bop, yes, yes, skibbity bop. Neep, neep. Please stop! Someone get me out of this toilet! I can't deal with any more of this song! I looked and could see that Otto the Ocelot was inside a dungeon cell in the base, forced to listen to the song of the Skibbity Spider over and over. That's terrible. I need to do something. But I need to be smart about it. Maybe if I tune my guitar a bit, I'll be able to take them by surprise with a new sound. From day 40 to day 43, I snuck inside the mini base and hid myself from the ordinary Skibbity Toilet soldiers. All I have to do is deal with the Skibbity Spider, who is guarding the ocelot, then I'll be able to extract him and escape. I quietly, carefully made my way to the center of the lair and over to the cell where Otto the ocelot was held captive. Let me go! You've held me captive for many days and I can't help you with your war! I wouldn't Skibbity say that! Your world seems skibbity short on humanoids, so if we want to make more skibbity toilets, we'll have to make skibbity do with the animals. You will be the first ocelot to ever join the skibbities. No, 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 please, I hate toilets. I try to avoid them. Skibbity, skibbity, skibbity. No! Before Otto could come to harm, I stormed in, isolating the spider. Let that ocelot go, skibbity spider. I'm the one you want. I know you. You're that speaker head that G-Man told me about. I'm going to skibbity skin you. The skibbity spider charged forth, but I countered with my guitar. Thanks to the tuning I did the other day, my guitar now had greater knockback. Every time the skibbity spider got close, I bashed him farther away and dodged his approach. It took a while, but with enough wax, the skibbity spider went down. Come on, Otto. We're busting out of here. Swamp Pig is waiting for you. Thank you, speaker head. Otto and I made our stealthy exit from the mini base and returned to the Swamp Pig. The two were happy as could be and promised to get as far from the skibbity toilets as possible. From day 44 to day 49, I transported the building blocks that I was able to find in the Crag Gardens back to my base in the Aspen Forest. It's good to be back after spending so much time in enemy territory. Our defenses are looking a little thin, though. I'll do something about that later. Once I was inside the base, I met up with Mandy, who was just feeding the pigs, and I turned the building blocks over to her. This is just what we need to continue work on the statue. Was it difficult to get? Not for me. I'll do anything for the cause. I'll get back to work on the statue, and here is some bacon for you. Neat. I'm gonna work on something, too. I went back to the perimeter of the base so I could do something about the lacking defenses I spotted earlier. The solution was simple, yet effective. A perimeter wall around the entire base. The skibbities will have a hard time getting through that. When the wall was done, I went to see Mandy. She had already completed the next part of the statue. Looks like we were both working hard. It's like you said before, Zozo. Anything for the cause. That's right, Mandy. We're going to win this war no matter what. That moment, I felt really inspired. From day 50 to day 53, the G-Man brought a big army of skibbity toilets to attack the base. The new defenses were able to slow them down, but we were definitely outnumbered. Even so, there was no way I'd give up. It was time to fight. You're going down the drain, you toilets. Skibbity, 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 skibbity. With the knockback of my guitar, I kept the skibbity toilets at a distance so that I could take them on individually. When they crowded, they were strong, but on their own, I could handle them. Divide and conquer. That reminded me that I was also fighting alone. Oh no, Mandy, I have to make sure she's okay. The G-Man spider toilet had Mandy in his terrible grasp. I almost couldn't watch. Speaker boy, you've survived longer than we expected, but the next toilets we send after you will be like nothing you've ever seen. We'll make your mandrill friend into one of them. I won't let them change me, Zozo, but come and rescue me soon. Mandy and the G-Man disappeared into the distance. I vowed to myself that I'd get my friend back. But first, I had to take out the rest of these skibbity toilets. With my trusty weapon, I cleared out the base and began to feel strong as a new form of power took hold within me. I grew into a big speaker head, 
feared by skibbity toilets everywhere. I had 40 hearts and a brand new ice blast attack that would freeze the skibbity enemies solid. From day 54 to day 57, I restored the base to its former glory. The attack had been devastating, but even more devastating was the loss of Mandy, my friend, my fellow soldier, Mandy. If the G-Man made her into the first mandrel skibbity toilet, I might have to, no, I don't even want to think about that. I have to, have to, save her. I was full of concern for the animal mobs of the world because any of them might get turned by the G-Man and as many skibbity toilet minions. I decided to return to the Crag Garden and see if the Swamp Pig was still around that area. Sure enough, he was. I am, I'm around the area. You are, not to be rude, but weren't you going to go somewhere safer? There aren't that many safe places left. You did a great job fighting the skibbity toilets when you were here last time, so me and Otto thought we could hold out here. This war has gotten really bad. There must be a base of operations where their skibbity toilets are coming from. If we beat them there, maybe we can stop their armies from spreading. I've heard that a lot of skibbity toilets have been seen and heard coming from the Crimson Forest. If that's where the enemy is coming from, I have to proceed with caution. Still, this intel might help me save the world. Thanks, Swamp Pig. I was thanked. From day 58 to day 62, I mined for some diamonds because it was high time that I got myself some diamond gear. I need to be fully equipped when I face down the skibbity toilet on their own territory. It's diamond or nothing, man. I walked further through the cave and came to a dead end. I started digging and broke through into a massive cave. It was teeming with diamonds and one very big tarantula. Oh, spiders are freaky. I don't want to get near this thing, but my anti-skibbity ranged weapon won't work on it. So melee it is. I drew my guitar and squashed that spider with a few decisive smacks. I wonder if this is where those spider toilets get their legs. You know, I forget I asked. I gathered a bunch of the diamonds and crafted myself a diamond pickaxe and diamond sword. Success! From day 63 to day 66, I was walking by the incomplete statue in the base and decided to spend some time looking at it. Mandy had been doing her best to complete the statue so that I could be seen by all, and I did my best to help by getting the materials for it. We worked together. That was teamwork, and teamwork is the only way we can defeat those skibbity toilets. I will rescue Mandy and defeat the G-Man and all of his toilets. For the sake of this world and all the creatures living in it, we will win. And if you want to get in on the teamwork, you should hit that subscribe button so that you can see my videos whenever they come out. The more subscribers the channel gets, the bigger our team gets, and the more skibbity toilets we can defeat. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe! From day 67 to day 70, I infiltrated the Crimson Forest so I could see what was going on behind enemy lines. Before too long, I could see a huge base that definitely belonged to the skibbity toilets. Bet that is some kind of weapons research lab. You've probably got Mandy held captive inside there. Hang on, Mandy. I won't let them turn you into a skibbity toilet. I got out my anti-skibbity chemical blaster and made my way towards the entrance. There were two classic model skibbity toilets standing guard over the gate. Both noticed me and began to run over. Skibbity, 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 dot, dot, no, no. I blasted the skibbity toilets with the chemicals, which flushed them away for good. This alerted some other toilets, but by then, I was already inside the enemy base. Bring it. I'll flush every one of you. From day 71 to day 74, my devotion to the cause brought me deeper into the enemy's base. I had never been in a place with so many skibbity toilets, but at this point, I wouldn't let anything stop me. Just one soldier, but if I fight well enough, I can keep taking them on and moving ahead. While I was expecting trouble, I was surprised to see the soul vultures had also come to roost in the skibbity toilet base. Those guys had never been nice or helpful, so the reunion wasn't a happy one. Let me guess, something about meat. Like how you're gonna eat me? Skibbity, skibbity, skibbity. Huh, skibbity? Did they get you guys or what? Nah, just kidding. We soul vultures never change. We're all about scavenging and hunting, baby. It's living. Well, I I don't know if I'm relieved or annoyed. Let's just fight. I took out my diamond sword and cut down the soul vultures. They weren't that difficult to beat now that I'd powered up. In the same room that I was attacked by the soul vultures, I found a chest with a full suit of diamond armor. Super, I can take on the world in this. I could hear the skibbity song getting deeper and louder, which meant that I was getting close to the G-Man. This'll be the rematch of the century. From day 75 to day 78, I found the evil skibbity toilet laboratory where the G-Man had been keeping Mandy. They had her cave 
staged. Just like she promised, the skibbity toilets were unable to turn her into one of them. You made it, Sozo. I was waiting this whole time, and I knew you wouldn't let me down. I would never leave behind a fellow soldier, Mandy. We're in this together. Let me get you out of those restraints. I freed Mandy and broke a hole in the wall so she could escape. Run back to base. I'll be right behind you. Just then, G-Man's spider toilet burst into the room. Well, well, well. We meet again, speaker boy. You're not going to get away this time. You think I'm running? No way, G-Man. This is where I take you down and end your reign of skibbity terror. With those old tricks? I doubt it. G-Man was right about one thing. He had seen my sonic blast and anti-skibbity blast before. But I still had something he hadn't seen yet. My ice blast. I continued to hit him with the regular stuff to lull him into a false sense of security. Then, with perfect timing, I ice blasted him right in his big creepy face. When he was stunned, I closed into melee range and swung my guitar with all my might over and over. I shot several more ice blasts because they seemed to be working. Then I knocked G-Man back into a wall. Wall. His spider malfunctioned and started smoking. From the looks of it, the attack had beaten him. Or so I thought. From day 79 to day 84, the G-Man spider rose from his fallen state and began to chant his skibbity song while he grew larger. Skibbity, 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 skibbity. G-Man became a truly powerful monster. The strongest skibbity toilet ever. The peak of their horrible evolution. Uh-oh, I'm not equipped for this. What's the matter, speaker boy? Scared? Even your best weapons can't touch me now. I have gone to a level beyond. Soon, all things will be ruled by the cold porcelain of the skibbity toilets. I will never let that happen. Mark my words, I will find a way to counter your new form, just as our side has done for every skibbity toilet that came before. Ah, uh -huh, but for now, you must run. You must warn all the world that I am coming. Skibbity, skibbity, skibbity. I made a tactical retreat, as the G-Man predicted I would. This next battle would be a difficult one, but maybe, just maybe, it could win the war. From day 85 to day 89, I had made it back to my base and had begun thinking of a new strategy to take down G-Man's Skibbity Spider Toilet's brand new Super Deluxe Skibbity Mode. I was stumped because the previous fight forced me to use every weapon I had at my disposal. As I continued to puzzle, Mandy showed up and decided to help me come up with a new weapon. Any ideas, Mandy? Yes, you've tried sonic, energy, chemical, and ice. But what about fire? Mandy gave me a fire aspect enchantment to put on my diamond sword. Now I could burn up skibbity toilets with fiery sword slashes. But will it be enough? Don't worry about that right now. I want you to see the statue. It's completed and it looks great. The statue was the Titan Speaker Man, an inspiration for all speaker heads everywhere. Looking upon his imposing form reminded me that I could keep fighting and win this war. But how? We're so close, yet G-Man is so powerful. He isn't invincible. You nearly beat him last time as you are right now. If you grow to his size, it'll be an even fight. You're right. Another power-up would be exactly what I need to win the battle. I'll bet there's some skibbity tech you could steal from their own base in the Crag Gardens. From day 90 to day 94, I made my way back to the enemy stronghold in the Crag Gardens in search of a power-up that would make me as strong as G-Man. This time I didn't need to go to stealth mode because I blasted my way through the base with fire and ice, taking down every skibbity toilet I met along the way. I wasn't even losing hearts fighting these skibbity toilets anymore. They weren't even a threat. Only G-Man were the same. After a bit of a search, I found what I was looking for. A potion of power that could turn anyone into a super strong version of themselves. I'll examine this back at my base and make sure it's safe to drink. From day 95 to day 97, I was back at the base experimenting with the potion and gearing up to take on G-Man when I got a surprise visit from somebody I never expected. It was Swamp Pig. Hey, what's cooking? You cooking up the diamond armor? I'm warming up to take down the G-Man. Let's not question my methods, okay? Anyways, what's up, Swamp Pig? Uh, okay. I just came by to say that the world is a lot safer now that you defeated most of those skibbity toilets. If you can take down the G-Man boss, then this war will be over at last. 
I want to help with that, so I'm giving you this. Swanbeg handed over a full set of netherite armor, the best defense I could have for the final battle. Dang, Swamp Pig, where did you find this? In the swamp. Obviously. That explains everything. Anyway, thanks. I equipped the armor and felt cooler already. On day 98, the war was looming and I was starting to get a little nervous about the fight. Then I remembered what I was fighting for. A world safe from skibbity toilets. Think that all of us would like to see that. What else would you like to see? Tell me who you want me to be next in the comments below. Don't forget to go search for more Zozo videos as well. There are so many to watch and all of them have their own amazing stories and fun. That's Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. Go check it out. On day 99, I launched my attack on the Crimson Forest, finding it mostly deserted. I walked past the reception, the corridors, a terrarium where I found a vent shaft through, which I crawled deep into the base. It's incredible. Incredible. I can't hear any silly skibbity songs. Maybe they packed up and left. I kept crawling until the shaft gave way to my weight, and I dropped and landed right in front of J-Man. You wish, speaker boy. Skibbity will never die as long as there is someone to carry on the chorus. It was J-Man. It was me. Hey. That's Swamp Pig's joke. You can't steal it. Actually, I can. Everything in the world belongs to Skibbity now. I am too powerful to be Skibbity Stop Doop Doop. Yes, yes. Your reckoning is upon you, Speaker Boy. You know something, G-Man? They say everybody wants to rule the world. I don't know if that's true. I just know that you won't get to. I downed the potion of power, immediately growing to the same size as G-Man with 100 hearts. We fired his laser at me, but I could fire one too now, so I counter lasered him. I'm a firing my laser! He was not expecting that, so I mixed it up with Ice Blast, Chemical Blast, and Sonic Blast. We circled around each other, closing in as we launched projectiles. I drew my fire enchanted diamond sword and swatted him with it. The fire seemed to hurt, but I wouldn't let him adapt, so I kept changing my attack. Ice Blast, Fire Slash, Laser Blast. The fight was tense and close, but with all my different weapons, and my dedication to rid the world of skibbity toilets, I managed to flush G-Man for good! Ah, skibbity, skibbity, no! On day 100, I basked in the glow of my victory, no, of our victory, as I returned to base and celebrated with Mandy and Swamp Pig. Hooray! Zozo is our hero! The skibbity toilets are gone for good! This was an achievement that would go down in the history books, because together, with all of our crafts and innovations, we did something that nobody else had done. Defeat the G-Men skibbity toilet and save the world from skibbity domination.